Hello. Hello, everyone. I am Pratiksha Gupta. Uh, I am a speech language pathologist, come audiologist. And uh, I welcome you to the speech hour that uh, we have organized for all you parents and professionals. Uh, today, we will be talking about certain activities uh, that will help you uh, in improving your child's speech and language skills. Uh, you, you know, when a child is born, he comes with an uh, innate desire to communicate and learn. Um, he, he comes with a package very eager to um, um, learn from his, from his environment and pick up words. And he has this uh, capability to learn to communicate. Uh, but all of us know that certain children do not uh, meet their milestones on time. And uh, uh, from my end, this is a small effort to all of the children out there who need a little bit of push. Um, I'm going to unfold certain activities that will help you and your uh, child at home in establishing a better communication uh, among yourselves. And uh, um, hopefully, as informed parents, it will these activities will also show you a way um, in which uh, you can become this for your child to communicate at home and otherwise. OK, before we actually talk about the activities, uh, I would want to uh, touch base with certain important skills that uh, are important for your child to achieve. And the activities that I have planned today will be uh, focusing on all these skills. So the first very important skill is of joint attention. Joint attention, also called as joint interaction, is very important for your child to pick up language. The next important skill, which is a very important uh, pre-linguistic skill, uh, is the skill of eye contact, or also called as eye gaze. I'm not going over these uh, particular skills in details today, because our um, uh, topic of interest is something else. But if you have any queries, you are most welcome to shoot your questions at me. The next important skill that we will be covering with these activities uh, is attention and concentration. Uh, and also the very important set of motor skills, which your child needs in order to pick up speech and language. Necessarily, these, oral, these uh, motor skills uh, involve a lot of focus on oral motor skills. Uh, next important, in fact, extremely important skill is that of the audition or the hearing or listening listening skills. Another important skill is imitation. And last but not the least, um, a child needs a set of social good social skills to be able to imbibe from his environment. OK, so uh, having you know, briefly spoken about uh, these skills that a child needs, I am going to start talking about the first activity that I have planned to tell you about. Um, it's a very fun uh, and uh, encouraging activity for all children. Uh, you can do, do this activity with children uh, right from birth. Um, but obviously, you'll have to change the way you do with the child depending on his or her skills. Um, this activity is called What's in the Bag? If you have attended any of my sessions with your children, uh, you would know it's one of my favorite activities. And I do employ it in a lot of my sessions. So. Um, this activity basically involves you, you know, you need to take a bag, a bag which is opaque. Uh, you should not be able to see anything uh, from outside the bag. And 
you can fill this bag with anything that you want your child to learn okay so i have created a couple of bags so that i can show you all in one of these i have kept um these magnetic letters so i have the alphabet the english alphabet english letters that's one bag that i've created um another bag can be um a bag full of some small animal figurines i have a horse a dog duck so i've kept these farm animals in this bag you can choose the number of animals that you have and um you can make a bag another very uh, nice idea to make uh, a bag for this activity can involve um home items you know i um, you can get these easily from a store so these can have things like a small sofa tv lamp and uh, i have a small chair and i also have a kitchen console and similar things that you know uh, you can find in a doll house like a bed or a fridge a table etc okay so to do this activity uh, first you need to be ready with any one of these bags you know whatever you want your child to learn and start speaking so for example um, you take the animal bag for instance uh, you need to start this activity by a small song so whichever language you are comfortable in you can cook up your own song i normally do it in english and i sing what's in the bag what is in the bag tell me tell me whoever child what is the child's name you can say tell me tell me see ya what is in the bag and then you allow the child to open the bag and put his hand inside and take out an animal you can encourage the child to guess just by feeling and not by looking or if the child wants to see and then name it's entirely his choice so a horse and then you can talk about the horse um if the child is really small you can just you know say this horse makes this sound how does the horse walk what does the horse eat you can talk about the horse you can even sing a small song about the horse 20 white horses upon a red hill etc etc to keep it engaging for your child i uh, strongly recommend that you sing lots of lo lots and lots of songs uh, which are related to the activity that you are doing it keeps the child's interest in the activity uh, similarly uh, you know you can take turns opening the bag so first is the child's turn and then it is the mother's turn and then again it's the child's turn so it also helps in um, uh, teaching the child the important social skill of turn taking it's a it's a very good activity i'm um, i'm sure you should try this with your child it will really help him um uh, the the uh, the skills that this activity works on uh, are obviously eye to eye contact attention concentration uh, it also works on uh, verbal expression labeling that is like naming also on identification you can use it variously to uh, cover any speech and language skill i hope you will try this with your children and uh, expand their vocabulary uh the next activity that i'm going to cover now is called scarves okay so uh this is a little different activity uh, which will require a little preparation um what you need to do is to have a cylindrical box like this 
you can even take a jar a long jar if, if you do not have anything as long as this tube so you should be able to basically put your hand through inside okay so you should be able to open it and what i've done is i filled this with a string of scarves that i have tied to each other so you can take your own scarves and just tie them to each other Yes, so I have four big scarves that I have uh, tied to one another. Um, what you need to do is that you need to find uh, scarves which feel different from one another. So this is actually a sensory activity which allows your child to uh, have a feel of different textures. So one can be a rough scarf, the other can be a silky scarf, the next one can be a netty scarf. And the last one can be uh, some other fabric uh, with some more, maybe some sequels that the child can feel. So what you need to do is in this activity, after you've uh, you know uh, tied up all the scarves together, what you need to do is ask the child that, you know, it's a magic box and let's see what comes out of this. So hand him the jar and ask him to start pulling out one by one. Let him explore. Let, let's see what he uh, thinks that he, he can do with the jar or with the box that you've created. So let him pull out. Slowly let him pull out. And then you know you can talk about, oh, such a long string of scarves. And then you can talk about the different textures in the scarf. Um, you can also talk about the various colors that the scarves have. Mm, you can talk about what you do with scarves. You can even try and pretend to uh, blindfold yourself. The children really like all these fun activities. Um, the idea behind uh, doing this activity is actually developing a lot of joint interaction or joint attention. You know, when you do this activity together, you will realize because it's such a different uh, activity altogether that your child will try and um, hopefully get interested in looking at what, you know, what's this new thing coming out of the box. And uh, um, hopefully he will uh, interact a little more with you. You can get really animated with your voice. You can say, "Ooh, what a pretty scarf coming out of the box. And, you know, you can use your uh, uh, the various sing song um, voices to attract your child's attention. Uh, this is specifically useful for children uh, who uh, have poor joint attention and poor eye to eye contact skills. Um, I have used this activity a lot with my children in my therapy and I find it's quite an exciting one. Um, please give it a try. I'm sure you like it. You can also what you can do if you do not have a box like this you can um, take a cookie jar and uh, um, just tie some handkerchiefs and do the similar uh, do a similar activity by tying up the hankies and putting them in the jar and then playing this but make sure that the jar is not transparent because then the child will be able to see through it okay so let's go on um, to the third activity for today's speech hour um, this activity is um, a very useful one. It's called conversation jar. OK, so um, what you need to do is you need to make a jar like this. OK, so you can take any jar, any cookie jar or any jar from your kitchen, clean it. And um, um, to make it a little fancy, you can um, cover it like this and put a label so that your child understands that it is some activity that you are going to do with him. Um, so I'll open it and show you what's inside. What I've done is I've made small chits of paper in which I, and you know, in the chits, I have written simple questions 
open ended questions which normally the questions which tend to strike conversation so um, so to get your child talking uh, there are questions like so i've opened this what is your name okay and there are questions like which is your favorite toy your favorite game and what do you like to eat etc etc i mean you know your child best so suit the questions according to his interests and uh, which is your favorite season this activity is actually meant for children who are little older uh, who can sit through and sort of uh, are able to uh, frame a few a few uh, sentences few phrases this activity helps in um, improving the mean length of utterance as we say uh, or say um, to put it simpler with this activity helps in improving the number of words a child strings in a sentence so it is simple once you have uh, made these questions and you put them in the jar you can take turns ask your child to open the jar the more hands on you make the activity the more involved children get so uh, you can make this jar with him i'm sure your child will really like this craft activity so open the jar ask your child to pick up out, uh, take out a chit and you can read that uh, sentence that question for him and uh, uh, give him an opportunity to answer if your child is not able to answer uh, or uh, you know not able to string the words correctly please model out the right answer for him so for example if the question is what is your name um, you know you can string the sentence for him the correct sentence i am pratiksha or i am sia uh, and help the child understand the game first before you take more uh, turns to play the game okay so that was conversation jar uh, another variant of the conversation jar that i uh, use a lot with the children uh, i see is an articulation jar okay uh, so for those of you who are new to the speech therapy world articulation means pronunciation so children who don't speak clearly uh, they might find this activity very very useful uh what i have done is again in this jar uh what i have uh, made are these small picture pictures so book bib what i have done is i was doing this activity with a child who needed uh, we wanted to practice the sound b with him so we um, um took out all the words which start with b so bike ball bubbles etc so we made a lot many cards of words which start with b and we put them in the jar and then we went shake 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 the jar your turn the child opened the jar picked out the word he had to say the word if he wasn't saying it correctly we prompted him um and things like that so you know you can do it with your own child uh, if he's struggling with any speech sound it could be b p k ch l m any sound um we can provide you with uh, uh word lists you can print them make these small cards at home and put them in a jar and get started with this fantastic game which uh, is a very fun way to uh, revise and speak words and get those sounds sorted okay so we've done this one the next uh, activity is fishing with straws okay so this is a, a great activity for improving oral motor skills you know a lot of children who are not able to speak properly um, uh, we find that uh, they have 
poor oral motor skills. A lot of kids are not able to blow bubbles or uh, suck properly through the straw. Or they have a very poor rounding of lips. And uh, their tongue muscles is not that developed. They don't move their tongues properly. So this game uh, is meant for all those children who have uh, poor blowing skills. Now what you need to do is you need to make some beautiful fish um, like that. So I've taken some colorful construction paper, thick paper. And I have cut out these uh, fish. So how many ever you want, you can. And just make them look like fish with eyes and the scales. You will need a couple of straws for this game. You can choose uh, various diameter straws, um, uh, varying thickness or varying diameter of the straws. It, uh, it helps in. Um, regulating the airflow in a different way. So start with the medium size, or depending on your child's skills, whatever is available at home, you can start with that. And you need a bowl. OK, so the game is simple. Um, you need to keep the fish on paper, uh, on, sorry, on a flat surface. And I think you can see it. OK. And you need to suck the straw. Through the straw, you need to suck the fish. Can you see? OK. I think I will just lower my camera. Um, I'm not sure if you were able to make out what I did. So I'll just tell you again. What I did, I took the fish and I put the straw on top and I sucked it. And then I blew the fish out into the bowl. So this activity actually works on two consecutive oral motor skills, sucking and blowing. It might look very simple to you, but actually it's not a simple activity. You know, for children who are uh, having issues with uh, um, rounding of lips and um, problems with blowing and sucking, they will find it quite challenging to do. Um, so I suggest that you do this activity by a lot of, uh, you know, demonstration first, show them how to do it, and then uh, carry out this activity. Once they understand what has to be done, I'm sure they will be uh, able to carry it out. Uh, also, if, you f if your child finds it very challenging, you can break it in parts. So allow the child only to suck the fish first, and then give him a break. And then once he's comfortable, he can um, um, blow out the fish in the bowl. You can make the make the activity more interesting by uh, uh, writing some letters on the fish, and you know you can work on listening skills also. So say I have these two fish, and uh, uh, so I say, okay, now I want you to. I am giving this verbal instruction to the child. Okay, um, so now it's turn for you to uh, take the pink fish or take the purple fish. So herein, it gets more challenging for the child to listen and then carry out the activity. OK, so this was for those children who have poor roller motor skills. Uh, the last activity uh, that I'm going to cover now is uh, an activity that you can do at home. It's called drying up clothes. This is a very simple uh, routine activity that you can do at home. So um, encourage your child to pick up uh, or help you in um, taking a bucket full of wet clothes from the laundry to the clothes line outside. 
and uh, um, you know encourage your child to take out some clothes and help you in putting them up on the clothes line now if you feel your child obviously is really short and the clothes line is tall you can mimic or pretend this activity as a game inside your house what you can do is you take a rope and uh, tie the rope uh, to two chairs so one end on one chair and the other on the uh, other chair this way you create a false or a pretend clothes line inside the house which you know you can vary the height depending on your child's height and then you know you uh, pretend to take out the clothes from the uh, bucket and your child hangs them on the clothes line um, now it, this is a very very language sort of stimulating activity because uh, it will uh, you know give you a, an opportunity to talk about the different types of clothes you can label uh, you know clothes like this is a skirt or it's a top or um, it's a shirt etc etc it will also uh, involve the child uh, and hence uh, um, stimulate him better so once the children do things they remember uh, things better it will also work on his uh, listening skills uh, you can say okay now i want you to pick up the sock and hang it on the rope this activity also works on fine motor skills you know the the clothes pin it's they're not easy to uh, press so by doing this activity you can also work on the fine motor skills of your child um, you can ask your child to uh, uh, give you instructions so children who are already at phrase level or who are already making sentences they can um, ask the mother or the facilitator and say okay mummy now i want i want you to pick up the um, trousers or pick up the shirt and then you comply and play along what i have done is i uh, have tried to make this little working model for you uh, to help you understand this activity better so you can even do this uh, with your children you can cut out small uh, paper clothes and uh, do the same activity so these clothes small clips can be used to hang the clothes on the line and um, have fun while doing this you can talk about colors you can talk about uh, the various uh, clothes and give opportunities to your child to speak uh, one of the most important skills or shall i say one of the most important techniques that you need to use while doing all these activities is to uh, pause and wait so give an instruction or ask in ask a question and then pause let the child know that you know he is expected to uh, answer the question or repeat or imitate what you are wanting him to uh, do um, so pausing is a very very important technique that you all can use um, uh, while doing these activities and uh, speak slowly and speak in a very simple language which the child can follow uh, use repetitive language for smaller children uh, it helps them understand better it helps them associate the words how they are spoken and how they hear the words it helps them in establishing that connection mm, and um, a few other tips can be when you know you for children who have poor eye contact and you are doing these activities please keep the object near your face so for example i was doing the conversation jar and uh, rather than keeping it here on my uh, shoulder level uh, i would rather keep it near my face and then say oh let's play the conversation jar this way the child tends to look uh, um, more near your face and there are high chances that he might just meet your eye okay so um, i am done for the activities for today's speech hour and i uh, would like to uh, answer any queries if anybody has.